Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing my Q1 2021 favourites. Dane reads. So these are my top 10 books of the roughly 70 to 80, something like that, that I read from March, uh, from January to March 2021. We're going to go in reverse order, so starting at number 10. We have The Honorary Consul by Graham Greene. So this is one of what he would call his entertainments, which is what he used to, like, differentiate between his more serious novels and his, like, books that are just meant to be a lot of fun to read. And in this one, um, basically, uh, it's set in an unnamed Argentinian town, and this group of terrorists slash freedom fighters, depending upon where you fall in the debate, try to kidnap uh, the honorary consul, uh, the American consul, only they accidentally get the British one instead, and it turns out nobody really cares about him. Uh, they bring in a doctor to check him over, and the doctor knows this guy, and they recognise each other, but the doctor also kind of has a reason for to not particularly want this guy to, you know, to live. So, um... You know, ethical quandary there, I guess. Grey and Green's always fun. Lots of good stuff. Do recommend. And number nine, we have A Decent Ride by Irvin Welsh. So Welsh does this kind of gritty stuff set in Scotland. Uh, this one it takes place during Hurricane Ballbag. So a hurricane's blowing in and you watch this like ensemble cast of characters. A lot of familiar faces, so, like Juice Terry's in it, for example. Terry finds out he can't have sex again or will die, which to, to a guy like Terry, who considers himself like a top shagger, that is a big deal. Overall, lots of fun. It was kind of less gritty, although there is still a lot of grit to it, but it was less gritty and more humorous than a lot of Welsh's other stuff. And in fact, I believe it won um, like a comic writing award, which I think says a lot about it. At number eight, we have Asterix Le Gaulle by Argosinian Eodetso. So this is a French uh, bon dessinaire, which is like a graphic novel. First of the Asterix books. Um, I've kind of seen a lot of the Asterix movies and consumed a bit of media here and there, but I'd never read the originals, and so it was good to read them in French. And there are a lot of like in-jokes as well that are based on the language, so you don't really get them in the English equivalents because they wouldn't work. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And yeah, just uh, I'm, I'm now like four or five Asterix books in and still loving them. And number seven, we have Baptism of Fire by Andrzej Sapkowski. So this is one of the Witcher books, and so far this is probably my favourite of all of the Witcher books. Um, as a general rule, the series is pretty good. Baptism of Fire, I think, is like the second or third novel, and there are a couple of short story collections that come before that. So obviously not a place you're going to want to start, but one to look forward to getting to when you get there. At number six, we have Albert Camus, The Plague. Uh, so this wasn't quite what I was expecting, but it still was a lot of fun. Some really good, um, like, philosophy to it. Basically follows an outbreak of the bubonic plague in this small town, and it gets quarantined. And, you know, we follow a couple of different characters. One of our main characters, his wife, is outside the quarantine and in a sanatorium, a mental hospital. And uh, just really beautifully written as well. Uh, I read the translation into English, so one day maybe I'll go back and read the French, once my French is a little bit better. At number five, we have A Slip of the Keyboard by Terry Pratchett. So this is basically uh, a sorted non-fiction by Terry Pratchett. Uh, at least I think it is, if it's the one I'm thinking of. It's been a long time since I read some of these books. But a lot of these, because there's also like a blip of the screen as well, and basically these are kind of collections that have been pulled together after Pratchett's death, bringing in together a bunch of his stuff that isn't really published elsewhere. And obviously I'm a huge Pratchett fan, was very devastated when he died, and um, I've kind of ran out of Pratchett to read, so the fact that these new collections have been published is a bit of a boon to me, you know? At number four, we have Isaac Asimov with The Rest of the Robots. So this is kind of a companion to iRobot, which is my favourite collect uh, short story collection of all time. Rest of the Robots, as the title implies, it's just all of the stuff that um, didn't fit into iRobot or any of his other robot collections. Loads of really great stuff. And what Asimov does well, particularly in his robots books, is looks at things like morality and the laws of robotics as well. So whether robots can harm human beings and the ways that the three laws of robotics can be broken as well. So definitely definitely recommended. At number three, we have another Isaac Asimov, The Stars and Their Courses, and this is another collection. Another thing that Asimov is great with his collections is he has these introductory essays in front of each of his short stories as well, which kind of gives you a little bit um, more kind of information in them as well. And um, overall, it ranks this high because Asimov is fucking great, mate. At number two, we have Steppenwolf by Hermann Hesse. So this is translated from German into English. And it's about this, um, like, 
I always say it's like Catcher in the Rye, but for disillusioned 30 and 40 somethings. It's about this guy who's kind of a bit of an outsider in society, uh, doesn't like people at all, and he's decided he's going to kill himself on his next milestone birthday. And it basically just follows his way through life, and um, yeah. I, as I say, I, I think I relate to it more because I am in my 30s now. I don't think I would have liked it anywhere near as much in my early 20s or my teens. And it's another one of those as well that's really beautifully written. In fact, I was impressed that it was so poetic, bearing in mind it's a translation, you know? I think the translator must have done a really good job and I, I just wish I could do German well enough to read the original. So that leaves us with number one, which was Unbury Carol by Josh Malaman. So I was surprised this was as good as it was because I read Bird Box, I think last year or the year before, and um, I didn't think it was particularly good. Bird Box came across to me like the first book of an indie author, you know? It was just air. And actually Malaman is a musician by trade and is, is in a band and stuff. And it definitely read like a musician had just written a book and it was just okay, you know? Uh, I'm not really sure why all the hype around it, to be honest. Unbury Carol, however, came across as being by a much more seasoned author. It blended together bits of like magical realism with historical fiction, kind of set in like the uh, frontiers of the Wild West. And this woman, Carol, has this condition where she goes into like a death-like state, a bit like when Juliet drinks the uh, potion in Romeo and Juliet. And uh, only one other person, or at uh, the beginning we think only one other person knows about it, and they died, and then the other one is her husband, who isn't getting on too well with her, so when her friend dies and the stress of it sends her into one of her episodes, her husband uses the occasion to try to bury her alive, for good essentially. Just really well written, it was one of those books that I just couldn't put down, I had to keep reading it, you know, so I think it very much deserves the number one spot for Q1. So, obviously, at the time of filming this, it's the end of April, almost going into May. By the time you're seeing this, it's in May. So, uh, keep your eyes peeled because I will have a Q2 favourites, and then, obviously, Q3, Q4. At the end of the year, I bring together the books that made it into each of my four uh, top 10 favourites videos and do a top 40 books of the year. So, keep your eyes peeled for that. In the meantime, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.